Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, still the voice of hardcore boxing and today we're going to do a boxing royalty video. I'm at Clinton Woods' house in Sheffield and we're going to talk a bit of boxing and talk about Clinton's career which, as you all know, were fantastic. Washing machines on, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, washing machines on. How are you doing, Clinton? Nice to you. see you. Hope you're well. Now, Clinton, you had an interesting career. 15 years, wasn't it? Let me just get that back a little for me, Clinton, on your, on your box, right? It were 1994. Now, you started off fighting somebody who I used to work with, probably back when I was a teenager, Ken Burton. Ken Burton, yeah. Fought him twice, didn't you? Ah, uh, top kid. Top, uh, top blood. He's a ref, he's a ref now uh, for amateurs. I know, uh, He does amateurs, he always speaks highly. Uh, I've, I've seen him a few times on the... Uh, on videos. Mm, well let's just back up a little bit then Clinton. How did you get into boxing? What made you do it? Boxing from a very young age. Uh, there's five lads, two girls in my two girls in my family. Yeah. Uh, one morning come rushing Christmas day in our day are a bit different. Yeah. We used to be all I sat on it then then old kids, old old seven of us. Mm. My mum and dad used to be downstairs wrapping up pens up in the morning. They used to shout us down and we used to just Fucking bomb downstairs, we all ran downstairs. I was seven year old and uh, my brothers were all opening their presents and all getting shorts, football books. I opened mine and got a pair of boxing gloves. And to this day, I don't understand why I got boxing gloves. Mm. Uh, I got boxing gloves and a boxing bag. One of them sta what you stand up when you punch oh, yeah, it, it bounces yeah. back in. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's how it started. Just, it was weird, it was just a Christmas yeah. morning. I got boxing gloves and my dad always says because I was shit at football. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what he says. Uh, so and, he that, and, that, boxing and then he took me to a boxing gym, Ray Gillis, Hillsborough Boys. Uh, and that's that's how I started. Didn't you when you were didn't you pack in for a few years though, like right, when you were a teenager and then you came back yep. to it, didn't you, to get fit and From seven year old to fifteen, yeah. I were I were at Hillsborough Boys non stop. Yeah, and yeah. then a few things happened in my life. Mm. I'm packed in at 15. Yeah, you're packed in at 15. And then you came back to it at what age? I walked into a gym at 22. 22. So from 15 to 22, that's seven years. Do you think that hindered you moving no, forward? Really? No, really. I did the best thing. If I could, if I, people say if I could do start again, Kinsa, would you have not retired? Would you not packed in at 15? No, I'll tell you why. Right. I miss nothing. Yeah. And when, all the, when all these kids talk about it, oh, they did this, they did that, they missed that, they missed this. I miss no, I did all them pissing about, boozing, women, flipping, a little bit of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit, a little bit of gear, whatever I used to do in them days, bit of whiz, <laughs> bit of whiz. I enjoyed myself, yeah, so I yeah, missed yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed nothing. The only, reason what, the only reason why I walked back into a boxing gym, because yeah. I used to play a pool a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one day I was playing pool and I'm, I'm taking this shot and one of my mates come behind me and he went, and he got hold of my tit and he went, whoa, they're coming on now. And I hated it and every time I used to play pool, he used to do it, he used to touch my tits. Yeah. And so I thought, I'm going to start training. Well, not like that, I was fainted every weekend. Yeah, I were yeah. like, a little rat when I was at that age. Yeah. So that's one of the main reasons why I started boxing again is, I was in trouble all the time. So, and obviously, you decided to start back training again, and you, you walked into Dennis's gym, didn't you? Yeah, I walked into, yeah, I walked into a gym. A gym, someone told me, the guy told me there's a gym down this little this little lane in Woodhouse. So I went down, walked in, Neil Port with you, didn't really, want, didn't really want out to do with me. I walked in and said, come to train. Funny thing about it, I'd been, I'd been in a big fight that, that weekend, yeah. so I had black eyes. Hang on, two seconds, I'll keep going, yeah, go on. I had black eyes, and I think Neil thought oh, got a bit of a fuck, so he had no to do with me. And so you started tra but training then, and uh, how did it go at first? Were well, you happy with that? I just started training, just started training, keeping fit, and then Neil started paying a bit of attention to me. Uh, and it just went on from there. And you, and you just kept going through levels, didn't you, Cos? Yeah. I've heard that you didn't think you were going to really well, get to where you did. Listen, obviously, yeah. I didn't think I'd win out. And I'm telling you that, I never thought I'd win nothing. Yeah. When I, when I turned pro, maybe I fought Central Area. I thought I'd win a few. Win a few, and then I thought the first time I'd lose, I think that'd be, that'd be it, finish. Yeah. So, you've started, you've started boxing again. You decided to turn pro. Uh, were you happy with the deal you got when you turned pro or did you just want to get it? There was no deal. There was no deal. Oh. Dennis says you want to turn pro. 
Um, because Dennis used to come to the gym, he used to jump in ring with a lot, he used to spar with us. Yeah. He used to have a right laugh. That, that gym were like, the best years of my life were the, the beginning. Gym. Yeah. He had some right laughs. Uh, Dennis just one day said, do you want to turn pro? Have a good pro? So I'm always like, just shrug my shoulders, says, yeah. Next minute we're like, hey, things going into things, I'm having brain scans, I'm having this. And it all started and it just like went, went happened so quick. Yeah. Now you, you, ro you rocketed through, uh, I think you got to about 20 and old, didn't you, Clinton? I'm gonna get that back up again. Because uh, then you, you, did, you, won, you won an area belt, didn't you, straight away? That was your first. Let's have a look how long it took you to get area belt. I think it was like the 12 fight area belt thing. Yeah, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, yeah, so you got an area belt against Craig, Craig Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. You beat him on points. And then obviously you missed English, probably couldn't get that. Well, no such thing as English. What the one? Oh. I wasn't in English. Oh. It's, it's, a bent, it's, a, it's another belt, it's like the yeah. lineal belt. <laughs> <laughs> they invented it. So, you went, so there were no English belts? No, in listen, there were no English. There was no British Masters. There were no British Masters Gold, British Masters Silver, and on and on and on. Oh, right. There was a central area, then you go for the British, then you go for European, then you go for, Con uh, for the Commonwealth, then you go for the world. It wasn't this tirade of belts in between. Yeah, yeah, I know you're a bit old school with belts yeah. now, you don't get it, do you? I did win a WBC. Yeah, yeah. International. Yeah, But yeah. you'll never see me showing it off because I'm not that bothered. But you needed that for uh, the ranking, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, to Roy Jones. Yeah. So you've ended up with area belts. Uh, some good names on here. You fought that Danny Jum when he had a draw with Robin Reed. Yeah, yeah, you were tough him. Yeah, 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 like yeah. yeah. I heard me, that's the first time I've ever heard my hands on someone's head. Yeah. Yeah, he beat that Darren Little but knocked him out as well. He's a, he, he's a de he was decent. Darren was a top kid, nice kid. I was, I was actually worried about that fight because he, he, he was from the Ingalls gym. Yeah. And everybody all talks about the Ingalls gym. Rightly yeah. so, because all the champions are produced. Yeah. Uh, and I were a bit worried about the fight, but the fight ended up being a, a pretty easy fight for me. Yeah. Now, when you bumped into uh, Kev Burton, how did them fights go? <laughs> he's <laughs> tough, Kev, isn't he? <laughs> Tell the truth. I'd seen Kevin a few times. Um, his last fight, he did a ring entrance race on his motorbike, and, he, <laughs> and uh, he, 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 if he get a decent record, when I fought him first time, and uh, I went a bit, I thought it would be a tough fight, and I made it a tough fight because I got, I just got involved with him yeah. instead of moving like I used to. I used to be a better, better mover when I first started, mm. uh, so I beat him, I beat him on points pretty easily, yeah, like. yeah. and then mm. the second fight, um, there was a ghost knockdown. The, everybody talks about me getting knocked down about Kevin Burton. Yeah. And Kevin Burton, you know I tripped all your foot. <laughs> <laughs> I tripped all his foot and I went down. And I'm sure, I don't know if the, if, the, if he counted, but people always talk about me when I got knocked down against Kevin Burton. I never got knocked down. He's still dining out off that though, Kevin, isn't he? <laughs> He's <laughs> You're not bothered about that, you think, man. Uh, the Dave Starry one. Yep. You bumped into Dave Starry, and let's, uh, he were red hot at the time, yeah, Dave Starry. Yeah, we were red hot, yeah. I sparred him before. Yeah, and so you knew it was going to be an hard fight, didn't you? Yeah. So you're fighting Dave Starry for Commonwealth uh, title, super yeah. middleweight. Yeah. Were you tight at the weight, Clinton? I wouldn't have been if I wouldn't have been taking creative. Yeah. I'd yeah. have been banged on. Yeah. But for some reason, I was training down London, and all these guys were saying to me, oh, take this, take that, take this, creative. So I'm taking creative without knowing... I had no nutritionist, yeah. uh, so I was taking creatine and what I was doing, I was just stacking up on it. So yeah. when it comes to the weighing, I had no one doing my weight, looking at my weight to see what I was like. Yeah. I, I just thought I'd make the weight easy like he always had. Yeah. And I got on the scale, <laughs> we had a test, a test weighing and I was miles over, so I, I did struggle a bit at it, but I made the weight. Um, but I did struggle just because of creatine, not, nothing to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and you ended up losing on points to yeah. Dave Starry. Yeah. After that, is that when you decided to move up? Well, after that, I, I came over driving home from Hull, and then more or less like that. I say, I finished, done, finished. Yeah. Do, doing all chat, thinking about moving up, and then we just, we just started training again and then moved up like away. And you ended up fighting uh, 1999 Crawford Ashley. So the same year, oh no, sorry, eight. A, a year later, you're in with Crawford Ashley, third fight after Starry, and you're fighting for a British Commonwealth European title against a massive, massive yeah, yeah. puncher. 
uh, who uh, who'd been in with I'm not, I'm not sure if he fought him before you or he fought Virgil Hill didn't he or yeah he, he, he just that, that was before that yeah that was before so you're going in with a massive puncher who who Carl Zaghi nearly ended up fighting and he didn't but we'll get on to him further on the fight you got you got a uh, was it a cheekbone or an ice no my nose. nose where your nose bro? my nose busted first round first round yeah he could wipe he could punch trophy actually yeah so as you're progressing through the fight, could you feel that his power were going? Yeah. yeah. But you just had to hang in there. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I, I've got no things about boxing. I got Crawford actually on the right side. You must have. I, I don't think he took me serious the fight. Yeah. Um, and I, I knew after I knew after about three rounds I wouldn't wear him down. Did you? Um, I do. I do think he took me lightly, um, and I got him at the right time. Crawford actually. I've watched Crawford Ashley some of his, his fights before when he was fighting Ma uh, Michael Nunn and Crawford Ashley was top notch. He was a top notch yeah. fighter. I'm glad I got him when I got him. Yeah. I do think I do believe at the time I got him at the right time. He were a cruiserweight well down to like everyone he could. Yeah, he was a big, big guy as well. Big he was guy, six yeah. foot four, Massive. six three and a half, yeah, yeah big guy, wasn't he? Uh, so you've stopped Crawford Ashley and then you've uh, let's have a look. You've gone through a few tick over fights and then obviously you're waiting for the world title then aren't you because you're going for... Well there was, there was a Clemenson fight which were a big fight. Yeah, you sparred him didn't you? Yeah. Will <laughs> Clemenson. I heard a little story that did you have to go out to his countries as well? I went, I went out two or three times to his, I went to Denmark once to train with him for two yeah. weeks. And, and he was, went, he and was knocking went. people out wasn't he? Well I would train him to fight when he fought Crow Freshley. Yeah. I was his sparring partner for that. And then he had me again when he was fighting for a world title. Yeah, because he was a big puncher. He was, well, he was, the, he was the biggest yeah. puncher of anybody, of anybody. I've heard he was menacing as well, ain't Jim and all that. He was a bullet. Yeah, because <laughs> he, he, he knocked somebody out in sparring and then he said to you, You're next! Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. And he, you were waiting to go into sparring for the first time. You're not this, you're not this Russian out. And Russian were actually twitching on floor. And this is what they were like. And they, were, they weren't even tending to him. And he just shouted to me, Nate Woods, get in! And I'm like, Oh, shit, see. But you ended up fighting him and beating him, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, fighting him. It was, good, it was a good fight, actually. So, he could punch, he could whack. Now, you've just said that to me, Clinton, as if it's now. Now, Ola Clemenson, he's got a great record, but... Good record, good record. I don't think you get Gigi sent up as much as what you should, because you were like, oh, shit, but yeah, you've gone in and you held your own, sparring, and then you beat him as a pro. I just think you should big yourself up a bit more. To tell you the truth, he's sparring, huh? I, I was the one who... It was a funny story to tell you, because yeah. the second time I sparred with we were in, we were in uh, Gran Canaria, a place called Amphidel Mar, beautiful yeah. place. And uh, old man Dennis, the De me, I went, Dennis went, and old man Dennis went. First time Dennis had ever been abroad. Yeah. So anyway, we went in this beautiful, beautiful place. And anyway, when we start sparring, I'm like, I've got better. And I'm taking, I'm taking, not taking piss out of him, but I'm winning pretty easily. Yeah. So old man Dennis comes up to me and he says, after sparring, he says to me, he goes, Clinton, he went, they're going to have to go a bit easier tomorrow because all they're going to send us fucking home. Because <laughs> <laughs> he wants you to stay out there. I know not always remember it when he said that to me because that needs to slow down a bit because they're going to send us home. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you had a good time in that, yeah? Great, great time. I, I was going out getting pissed up a lot. Yeah. It's boring next day on beach. Oh, that's brilliant, man. You sound like having time in your life. Great, really good time, great time. Uh, Get paid for it. Yeah. yeah, you can't beat that, can you? So after that, you're going for obviously you go for WBC International against Ali Forbes. Yeah. You 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 stop him or he retired. Few tick other fights. Then you've got Roy Jones. Yeah. Now, how did he come about to be fighting Roy Jones? I was number one. Well, I was his number one challenger. Um, if, if boxing's right, yeah, they should yeah. they should fight number one challenger. So I was his number one challenger. Uh, and before the fight was going to happen, Dennis was saying, "Oh, the fight's happening." And I, was, I always thought in my mind, "It's not going to happen." Mm. And I've always been like that kind of. It's not going to happen. Anyway, the next minute, Dennis says his men are coming over. Brad Jacobs, is it Brad Jacobs? Yeah. Well, someone come over one of his in, on on behalf of Roy. And I'm in Dennis's house with uh, this this guy, and they're talking about the fight. And I'm like, still on like thinking, is "This really going to happen?" Mm. And they start talking about money for the fight and that lot, and I'm like. Jesus Christ, this fight gonna happen. I'm like, and then nothing happened, nothing at all. Mm. And then just one day, Dennis called me and goes, Clinton, goes, come on, we're gonna, we're gonna Miami to watch, uh, watch Roy Jones. He'll, he'll fight in Australia. It's Australian kid. Uh, so we went to, to watch it, and uh, Roy Jones takes piss out of this Australian kid. He bashes, bashes him up a bit. Um, yeah, go on, sorry. And then we get to press conference, 
and they're all 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 American TVs, they're all talking to Roy Jones, Roy Jones, I'm good at that's I'm the best. And Dennis just gets up and Roy, when you fighting my man? And I'm sat, I stood there, sat there, shit to me, said. And he went, get up. And I went, what? I went, get up. So he gets beat at front and I stand there. He went, why should I fight you? And I says, yeah, my number one challenger, you should fight me next. He went, everybody, this guy I'm fighting next. And that's how the fight we're done. No, oh, that's, that's, that's how we done. That's how you ended up fighting Roy Jones. So you go to Oregon, yeah. is it Oregon and my yeah, Oregon. That's yeah. where they make night trainers and all that, isn't it? Yeah, that was, it, it's, the, um, it's the main place for, the, for night, yeah. night headquarters up there. Yeah. So you go to Oregon, you get to see me Roy Jones, uh, what were it like, obviously he's fine. I enjoyed it. Enjoy it too much, I think. Yeah. He enjoyed all the, we were there, for me we were there too long, we were there two weeks, too long for me. Yeah. We were like an holiday, ended yeah. up being like an holiday. Dennis had said I overtrained. Dennis didn't quite a week, I think the week before. I'd overtrained, I'd call sewers and uh, But listen, I'll fight in Roy Jones. Pound for pound listen, number one. I was training at a gym where there weren't <laughs> there weren't no you know, there weren't no one doing my weight for me. Yeah. There weren't no one doing my nutrition for me. Yeah. There were no one doing I, I went check weight, you know, I went doing I would just go to the gym and do my boxing. Mm. But, I didn't, I didn't think I'd beat him. And yeah. I, I'm not going to tell the truth, but I'm going to say I were. I fought, I, I fought, I fought the 12 rounds. Yeah. Because I, I were a tough, tough yeah. kid. And I were, I, I couldn't go rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact, the, the fight, the, start of the first two rounds, I thought he had a shot. I'd come back and then put arms up and I'm like, fuck you know. I didn't think it would be hard. I, yeah. I thought it would be been easier. And then he caught me with a body shot. He bust, he, well, they said he bust me rib. I don't think he bust me rib. I think he did some damage down there. But, and then he just took it away. He uh, just turned it on then. Yeah, he turned it on. Uh, I'm glad they stopped it when they did it. When they did, I think, oh, yeah. they, I think when Dennis threw towel in, well, Dennis got a lot of stick for that mm. by support. But they don't realise what what were happening. Roy Jones were teeing up on me. And he were fucking, he were hitting me with some big shots. And what he did, Dennis, he, he saved me. He saved me for that fight for another day. Yeah. So we went back home and we changed a lot of stuff. So you, you fought Roy Jones. You, Dennis has thrown toweling, but at the time you're number one WBC challenger, you're area British Commonwealth European, you've done everything that you can, you've got into position, but you've fought the like a legendary pound for pound style. Nobody wanted to fight him at the time, did they really? So do you did, what did you think then we just gotta come down a touch and or hang in there for a few years until an opportunity comes? I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. So come back. Got back in gym training. I, I, I used to like the training. I used to love the training. Yeah. Uh, I started training and just whatever, whatever, whatever. We yeah. Didn't really change. Now we come back. We did, we did exactly the same. Can we just have a look. Can you just get back to that microphone? We did exactly the same thing. Yeah. So after Roy Jones, we went. You went for. You just had a few, a couple of tick over fights. Then you went for Glenn Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> and he's obviously he's the guy who, who beat Jones, didn't he? Knocked uh, him yeah. out, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So you're in with Glenn Johnson. Uh, you've drew with Glenn uh, for the vacant IBF. Yeah, yeah. You've then fought Jason Delisle, Rico. Oy. Then you got your world title, didn't you? You won your Rico Oy now. Tell me about Rico Oy, cause he was knocking everybody out. Eighteen, what, eighteen and all? Yeah, he he'd just been in prison for killing somebody, yeah. hadn't he? Yeah. He was a gang member and all that. Everybody were terrified of him, weren't they? And you stopped him, didn't you? No disrespect to Dennis. Yeah. Just being what me and Dennis did was special. Yeah, yeah. Coming from the beginning and yeah, yeah. work as well. If that had been Warren putting that show on, it would have been a massive. It would have been a Jeff Lacey. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because Rick Hawaii when when I watched when they sent me the, the CDs to watch him, yeah. I was terrified. I was like watching it, thinking, "Oh my God!" Mm. He was knocking people's spark out, and he was knocking good fighters out. Um, and I think they should have, should have really used the he'd been in prison for killing someone. And yeah. I think they could have made that fight massive. Yeah. Um, they didn't. They come over. The fight were a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, it could wait. He did. He did, did catch me a few times. But I do believe on that night I'd have beat any light like, every that night. Let's go off again. So let's not want to go into your personal stuff. That's all. Cheers. So after Rico, Oy, you're world champion, obviously you're Robert Moon, aren't you? You've, oh, got, you, you've got to the top oh, yeah, at yeah. Mountain. Um, where did you go back to that night? Did you? Went back, uh, that night I went to Hilton, the party at Hilton. Yeah. Little lads, a lot of people there who were involved with me and yeah. all my friends. 
uh, all my friends, even the friends, all my old friends from school. Yeah. They're all, I'm still big friends with all of them. Yeah, yeah. Did your life change, Clinton, in your mind, no. or were you just still the same person? My life's never changed. Boxing changed nothing through my life. Because no. some people come up to me at shows and they go, oh, I've seen Clinton Woods in, in Chippy up at no. whatever and ask them all. No. <laughs> I go out, I go out with, I go out with my mates when I went out with school. Yeah. yeah I, I, I do, I do, because I've got my gym now, I do yeah. have it, obviously friends from gym and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, and as you get older, you've got your kids and you don't see your yeah. mates as much as you used to, but. Yeah. But you're still the same lad from the yeah, same yeah. comprehensive school yeah. as you went to. Uh, so you've you've beat Rico or you're a world champion. Thirty-eight and two, Julio Cesar Gonzalez. You went distance with him, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, you were a good fighter. You were a tough fighter, yeah. You were really tough. Uh, you ended up rematching him, didn't you, as yeah. well? But in between rematching Jason Delisle and Glenn Johnson, uh, you beat Glenn Johnson, obviously. That was a good fight. That was a good fight. They, they show it all the time that on uh, yeah. boxing stations. You just went in pocket, weren't you? It's on all the time for the fights. This is a good fight. You know when you got up the next day after the Glenn Johnson fight, how did you feel? My neck were killing him. <laughs> People always say what you like next day. I can remember that fight, I couldn't get up. Couldn't get up. But I do think that fight, he would never say, and I would never say. Yeah, after that? Yeah, he would never say after that. Did you feel something in the yeah, gym? Yeah, we, 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 I had not shit. We had three fights with him, three 12 rounders with him. Yeah. Uh, he would never say, and I would never say. Mm. So basically, you spent 30. He spent under than eight minutes knocking lumps on each other, young yeah. Glenn Johnson. Oh, we did. And do you yeah. think, like Mickey Ward always says, him and Gatti, they spent obviously 30 rounds knocking lumps on each other. He said they were just, he would have it the same, you just got, something happens. I think it uh, took a lot out of me. That, yeah. that, the third fight uh, took some out of me. And, yeah. uh, and it's the same as him, because when, when you watch him, his fights after, mm. he would never see him. He never, yeah, he, never, yeah. he, he never threw the shots. and. Yeah, obviously after you had another rematch then with Julio Cesar Gonzalez. Dennis loves a rematch. <laughs> <laughs> so Gonzalez, Lyle and Glenn Johnson. So you had some fights with them, didn't you? But mm. the Glenn Johnson was the one where, because of his style, because mm. his style's pretty similar mm. to yours, isn't it? Mm. Do you think that because of his styles, that's why you, you're not yeah, lumps on each other? Yeah, yeah well, I think everybody expects me just to keep moving and moving with him, but he's hard to move against all for 12 rounds. So he's he got cuts it. ring off, doesn't he? He's clever how he did it. Clever how did it. Yeah. When Froch fought him, he said after six rounds, he says he had to change it, change it up. Yeah. Because he just kept coming forward like Pac Man. He said his head were rock hard. Yeah, it is. It is, it is, it is rock hard. His head's rock hard. He says, I kept thinking I'm going to break my hands on his head. <laughs> you do but think that. But it is clever because when he comes inside, he did switch to South Point side, then he switched again. So it, it was hard to like get. But, but I did prefer fighting him in the inside. I'd rather stand with him yeah. than move with him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, and after, then after that, obviously, Tarver. How did, how did you end up going to America, Clinton? Because you're the champion at the time, aren't you? Just, I, I, wanted, so I, I, I wanted, wanted to. Talk, yeah, I wanted to. Talk. Yeah, I did. Um, they were uh, nothing went right in training. Yeah, the fight happened. It's the only time. Uh, it's the only time I ever walked into a ring knowing I know Roy Jones, but that was yeah. like I, I was supposed to be at my best when I was fighting when, when I won the world title. Mm. When I walked to the ring with Roy Dubitava in the change rooms, I knew I was lose. It was just a matter of when he was going to knock me out. Yeah. And I can't believe he didn't knock me out. I can't believe it. I can't no. not believe he not. The way I was feeling that night, I cannot believe he didn't knock me out. You got through it then. He catch me a few shots like that, but he, he, didn't, he never troubled me. Who trained you for that fight? Did you change your trainer at this stage? Uh, no, at Poxon. Poxon trained yeah. you for yeah. that. Yeah. And you just want up with how it would count? Yeah, a few, few things went Yeah. Right. A few things went right. I, I don't want to keep going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 but a few things went wrong and you want your night. You went on night now. Yeah. All right. Well, that, after that, you ended up fighting in Jersey. Yeah, no, I went bothered. I went bothered. No. Well, you bothered by yeah. this stage, you know. Uh, I carried on just so I bad a word. I bad a word against Tarver. I didn't want to finish my career like that. Like that. Um, so even though I travel training with Glim Rhodes, he do not see what I was doing when it comes to running and things like that. Listen, when I when I would at my best. I was going down here, up the mills, across the, I mean, up, down, up, down. I was doing nothing like that. I was just going for little runs. And Want it there no more? Nah, I went the drive. <laughs> no. <laughs> Something must just happen then. No. Did you notice that it weren't there after the after the third Johnson fight? The Johnson fight did take a bit out of me, I think. Yeah. Now I was having a lot of trouble with my elbows. I, I had mm. operations on both elbows. Mm. Um, so... Well, then, after that, 
your, fi your final throw of the dice, Tarvaris Cloud. Uh, 